Hi class, in this uh, short introductory lecture to chapter three, uh, I want to start talking about some uh, concept like beyond numbers or what does infinity mean? So hopefully in mathematics, you've heard the, um, the term infinity, but like what exactly does it mean in, in the context of our class in nature of mathematics? Okay, so here's a question of day. Uh, what, what comes to mind when you hear the word infinity? So I don't know. Just just think about this yourself, you know, like um, infinity is, is some some type of concept that might mean forever or uncountable, um, you know, some some really, really large number. All right. So, you know, what what is infinity here? Um, what does it mean for a set to be infinite and how do you compare the size of two sets? All right. So first off, what is infinity? So. You might have seen infinity with this sign here that looks like this. This is the infinity sign. So I want to just dispel a, a common error. Infinity is not a number. Okay, infinity is a concept. Infinity means going on and on and on and on forever. Okay, so you can't put a number to something that's going on and on and on and on and on forever. All right, so what does it mean for a set to be infinite? Well, what that means going with the concept or definition I just gave, what does it mean for a set to be infinite? It just means the set goes on and on and on and on and on forever, and the set never stops. So the objects in the set or the numbers in the sets, they just never end. All right, so how do you compare the size of two sets? Well, so we'll, we'll talk about sets that have a finite number of objects in them, and then we'll also talk about sets that have an infinite number of objects in them. And that'll be something called later on in class, we talk about the cardinality. Okay, first thing um, I want to talk about when you compare two sets, and this will come up a bunch throughout the lectures in our class, is so this idea of a one-to-one -one correspondence. So two collections of objects are equally numerous, right? So the, the cardinality of the two sets are equal, right? Precisely if there's what is called a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of the two collections. So imagine I have this barrel of cars here and this barrel of soccer balls. Okay. We would say there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. If I could take each car and map it to one soccer ball, then I could take another car and map it to another soccer ball, then this car to another soccer ball, then this car to another soccer ball. And then all these objects, all these cars in here would go, each car would go to exactly map or get tied to exactly one soccer ball. Okay, you wouldn't say this car gets mapped to two soccer balls or this car goes to, to this soccer ball and this car goes to this one. So, no, each car goes to exactly one soccer ball and each soccer ball goes to exactly one car. If you have that mapping, that's what's called a one to one correspondence between sets. Okay, so let's just um, talk about this. Okay, and this seems silly, but let's just do two examples. All right, about something being this called one-to-one -one correspondence. So the first one is you have a bunch of balls, okay? So your first job every morning at tennis camp is to get the ball machine ready for action. So you open up some new cans of tennis balls and empty them into a large hopper, okay, like just about, about like a little metal cage to, cage to hold the balls. Is there a one-to-one -one correspondence between the balls and the can? Okay, so if you know anything about tennis um, cans, okay, if you buy one tennis can, it comes with three balls or three tennis balls in it. So suppose you open up 10 cans, okay? So how many total balls do you have? How many total tennis balls do you have? Well, if I have 10 cans, each with three, there's 30 balls. So can you form a one-to-one -one correspondence between the balls and the cans? You cannot, okay? Because what would happen is, is your first 10 balls would each map to a can, and then you'd have 20 balls left over, and those 20 balls would have to get mapped to cans that are already selected. So there is no way you can have a one-to-one -one correspondence that way. All right, let's try this one. So this is about backpacks. So you walk into a class late and notice a bunch of backpacks lying against the wall. How could you check to see if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the backpacks and the students? All right, and then is there a way to pair up each backpack with a student? Absolutely. Let's just assume right off the bat that each student brought in a backpack and nobody forgot theirs, all right? Nobody brought in extra ones. Well, how could you check to see if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence? You could literally grab a backpack and, and have the students come and say, okay, whose backpack is this? Come and grab the backpack. Whose backpack is this? Come and grab the backpack, 
All right, and that's a way you can pair up the backpacks with these students. So as long as at the end of that exercise, every student has exactly one backpack and there's no backpacks left over, there's this, then we would have this one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of students in the classroom and the set of backpacks. All right, class, I hope that helped and kind of made sense for you. And we will continue on with infinity in the next couple sections.